Hey YouTube, I'm Mars1952 and I'm working on my John Deere 4300 again. And today I'm going to replace the low pressure hydraulic return lines. So right, this is the part I'm working with right now. Hopefully you can read the part number. It's a M134346 John Deere. So that goes right here. And I, even before this tractor was stolen, I know that this part was defective because uh, I had it into the John Deere dealer, I don't know, three or four years ago. And when it came back, it was leaking here. And they had over tightened this clamp and cut the hose. Uh, they didn't want to admit that they had done it, so I just used an old trick that my dad taught me years ago. And I just clamped a little farther up on the hose. Uh, you can do that with radiator hoses too if you're out in the middle of nowhere and your radiator hose bursts. Usually it's going to burst right where it's connected to the engine because that's where it's the hottest and it'll fail quicker there. So you just cut off the burst part and scoot it down on the nipple and tighten your clamp down and you can get to a garage. So anyway, I'm going to replace this. This is really should be easy. You can do it with just a screwdriver. I'm going to use a ratchet and a uh, socket. This is an 8 millimeter socket. Let me zoom in here a little bit. You should be able to see that. So I'm just going to take it loose, it's not very tight, don't need the ratchet. So you want to make sure you don't over tighten these things when you put them back on because it will cut the hose. So loosen up the hose clamps, alright now it might come right off and if it doesn't you might have to persuade it a little bit with this, your screwdriver or I, I brought this it's actually a brake wrench but it makes a good pry bar I've already drained the fluid out of here but there might be a little leakage yeah there's gonna be some leakage let me get a towel Okay, so I got a bunch of paper towels ready to soak this up. Okay, so let me get this in front of the camera. You can see, oops, let me plug this up here. You can see, if I can get this in front of the camera, see where that was torn, right where it used to be clamped. So, and you can see I clamped a little further up. So that actually probably would have worked for who knows how long, but uh, as long as I have it torn apart and I'm replacing parts, I decided to replace this one too. All right, so let me clean up a little bit here. Um, this metal tube, as long as it's not leaking, I think it'll last a long time. I don't see any reason to replace it. Probably should paint it. In case you're wondering, these paper towels were used just to use to do some general hand wiping and drying and stuff, but they were still had a lot of life in them. After I'm done with them, there won't be any life left in them. As long as you're taking the clamps off uh, and the hose, you might as well put these clamps back on in a, in a position that'll be really easy to get to. So when you put your screwdriver back on there. Clean these 
job. Okay, so I can take the part number off and it goes in like that. This hose will go on the back like that and this hose will go on the bottom. I've cleaned up all these nipples and it wouldn't hurt to take a little bit of oil, lubricate the inside of these, I can take some of the oil out of the pump here. So it'll slide down over these nipples easily. And you can lubricate the nipples as well. Okay, so now, de-gunk my hands, hold those this one's got to go on first. Oops, lost the hose clamp. And these two go on pretty much at the same time. The hose clamp is already down here. I'm going to make sure I put this one on. Okay, that looks about right. Now let's just clamp her back down again. Okay, so one other little thing, there's, you notice there are flares on the end of all these nipples. You wanna make sure you clamp behind the flare. Make sure this middle one's all the way down. And clean up around it pretty well so you'll know after you start the tractor back up if this is leaking. I'm going to clean up all the wetness. Sure this is down good. Alright, so I'm just going to make sure I have just a little bit of torque on here. I have no idea how many inch pounds to go. Just do it till it's compressing somewhat, but you know, you don't want to get it over tight until you'll cut the hose. That's good. Alright, final cleanup, I'll move on to the lower hose. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the lower hose. And while I'm at it, I'm going to remove this Y adapter here and replace um, one of the other gaskets. This is the gasket that, push, that seals the, the adapter against the transmission housing. It's a YZ81448. And here is the lower hose. It goes right here. Low pressure hose looks like, like it looks a lot like a uh, heater hose. There's the number. 
to M1379. Take that off. Okay, so let's get this thing apart. Takes a 13 millimeter for the Y fitting. And somewhere we have the eight millimeter. What happened to it? There you go. And it takes an eight millimeter on the hose. So I put a pan under here to catch the actual grips. Let's get these hoses off of here. Our hose clamps, I mean. For some reason I put two clamps on here. I don't remember doing it. Maybe somebody else did. And this is way under there. All right, so that's loose. Maybe it should be looser. This is really, you know, a pretty simple job. It's just like changing radiator hoses. It's one of the first things I ever did as a junior mechanic. Now, let's see if we can get this off. You've got to scoot the hose up on this pipe to get it off that nipple. All right, it's off. Fortunately, it doesn't go out of the way very well. Now I've got to scoot it back down, which is a lot easier. Okay, so this thing is not too bad a shape. It's starting to get, this thing is not too bad a shape. It's starting to get deformed a little bit. Probably could have used it, but like I said, I've got it taken apart. I might as well replace this. It's a fairly inexpensive part. So we'll clean up the hose clamps. There should be a third one there someplace. Here it is. When I put it back, I'm only gonna put two on, I think. So I'll clean up the hose clamps, clean up these nipples. And but first I'm going to take that adapter, the Y adapter off at the bottom. Thirteen millimeter. I've already had this off once when I drained the transmission. So it shouldn't be very hard to get loose. But I didn't put it together really tight because so I knew I was going to have to take it off again. Now behind this Y adapter you'll find the uh, um, a metal screen. I believe I cleaned it before I put it back in, but I'm going to pull it out. I'll show it to you. Normally I'd be laying on the ground to do this, but I wanted to film it. For your all benefit. All right, well, here's the thing that sticks out of the bottom. Now, whoever, somebody put silicone forma gasket in there, that's not a good idea, because that'll end up getting in the hydraulics. And right here is the plug you take out to drain the transmission. But I'll tell you, 
Just taking that out leaves about a gallon or more of hydraulic fluid in the transmission. Clean her up. I'll have to scrape this stuff out. I'm glad I save all my paper towels because I use a, use a lot of them for this kind of a job. All right, so let me pull out the screen. So I'll just uh, hose this down again with brake cleaner before I put it back down, before I put it back in. I thought I drained out all the fluid out of here, but I guess not. Here's the gasket. I don't know if I told you the number on this one yet. Y Z. This Y is in yellow, Z is in Z, 81448. So let's cut her out. Okay, so this gasket. goes up against the transmission and this screen goes through it like that. Then this mounts on here like so. So this, uh, you can imagine, next time I want to take this off, if I want to take out the screen and look at it, this uh, gas is going to get in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this surface with the sticky stuff so that the gasket will preferentially stay on the transmission like uh, this gasket did. This is the gasket I just scraped off. It was used and reused several times. Um, so I'm hoping to get a couple uses out of the gasket I'm putting on today. So to put that on I've got to crawl under the, the tractor. I'm gonna clean up. I've already scotch brighted this surface here where this gasket goes. Sprayed the gasket with copper coat gasket adhesive. It also provides a little better seal. And hopefully that will allow this gasket to stick. So the gasket's got to go in. Line it up as good as I can. Then you put in the screen. Try not to get too much crud on the screen. That'll help hold the gasket in place. And then, before you bolt this on, you've got to crawl back up from underneath the tractor and get the correct bolts, which are right above the camera, but I can't reach them. Got the bolts. Got to get your exercise somehow. Now, this tube goes off to the, let's see, it would be the driver's side, if there was a driver's side on this tractor. You might be able to hear the thunder in the distance. I decided to do this job outside and it has been the rainiest July on record. So it wasn't a good plan. These things don't take a lot of torque. I can do it with this little Mac uh, wrench uh, ratchet. It's about the same size as the quarter inch ratchet. 
but you should be able to get enough torque with that. Make sure you don't over torque it. All right, let's get out of here. Okay, now it's time to put this on. And that's got to go on about like that. So I've already cleaned up this tube. Make sure it's nice and clean. I'm going to grease it up with transmission fluid. Got my 8 millimeter ready to go. Got a couple band clamps ready to go. Band clamps can go on. Orient them so you can get to them. And I'll dip into my drained hydraulic fluid to get a little bit of fluid to lubricate this. So I've got to telescope it on to the, um, the forward tube. Get it on there far enough that I can get this back tube on. Come on. Maybe slide it back a little bit more. Okay. Okay. That looks pretty good. Feels good. Nothing's in a bind. I'll we'll put on the clamps. I hear rain starting. I managed to get one little segment done before it started to rain. Did I turn the mic on? <laughs> All right, I've been forgetting to turn the microphone on about half the time. All right, well, this will conclude the um, low-pressure hydraulics. Now, you don't want to over-tighten this stuff. You'll pinch, you'll cut the hoses. So, I'll, once I get this thing started up, I'll double-check that for leaks. Might have to tighten it or reposition the clamps or something, That although that feels pretty good. Might have to add a double clamp, you know, who knows. All right, let's get the camera out of the weather.